what is going on guys my name is potion effects and today I'm gonna make an intro tutorial again yes of course I've I know I've done it a lot of times but I think I have progress progressed a lot in intros so yeah let's just get started so firstly we're gonna do the render settings which is really easy you just click that button right there and uh, then you go here and change the width to nine one thousand nine hundred and twenty and height to one thousand and eighty so there you get how here you get like in full hd intro and then you change the frame range to all frames let's do that okay and then you want to go to anti-aliasing and uh, choose best and change the max level to two and then you want to go and get a sharpen filter and change that to 10 and get a cell render and take it color on so now we have no we're not actually done with this yet sorry about that you're gonna go to save right here and sh click alpha channel and change the format to png go down to compositing project file and take all those save and like all of those down there then you go to file and find where you want to save it so then you make a new folder because you if you don't it's gonna be just be stacked all over so if it for example take desktop and you render it right here the whole desktop is gonna just be filled with pictures so you don't want that so so just uh, use put it in a folder so I'm gonna call the folder tutorial tutorial Two to two, you know. Then obviously it's gonna take a little while to load. Oh yeah, here we are now. And then I'm gonna change. Just take um, and just take the file name in here to tut. Then we are good to go with the render settings. Uh, so let's take a text on. I'm gonna go here to MoGraph. If you don't have it, you have the wrong version of Cinema 4D. You need a studio version. So yeah, MoGraph, and then you take Mo Text. Then you can take go to Object right here. It will lag a bit, but it's gonna come over soon, I guess. If my PC isn't shit, of course. Okay, there you see the text right here. Then you're gonna change the text right here to whatever you want. I'm gonna change it to potion because that is what I always do. Then you wanna change the align to middle. And then change the font to whatever font you want. I'm gonna find maybe like... Uh, I think maybe like a... Just normal bold font would work for me. Maybe not that. Doesn't look that nice. Um, mail ray stuff. No. Lemon milk looks pretty nice, I guess. Yeah, that looks good. Then you take this blue thing right here, and then you just drag it. No, the green. I I mean the green, and then you just drag it down. To do if you see, you see the green dots right there, you take it down to like when the layers start adding up, like. In the, the middle, the cross right here with the black bars, the black crosses all meet up. Then you take that down to there, and then you take change the depth right here to 60. Yeah, 60 is fine, or 80, doesn't really matter, just your personal preference. Then you want to take the blue right here and uh, hold and then click on it and then hold shift. And then press shift then you drag it to uh, 30 centimeters forward if you have 80 you will drag it 40 but I have 60 so drag it 30 centimeter forward so here you can see it's in the middle of the green bar right here that's so we have it aligned up right now then we're gonna go to caps in more text and change the cap to fillet cap on both end and start. 
and then have the radius to about 3 and steps both steps to 15. Then you want to click on the text up here and uh, press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V so you get two texts. Then you want to change the depth to 30 centimeters. Then take it back, no, I mean 40. So you have 20 centimeters left, right? Uh, less. Okay, and then you take it 10 centimeters back. Then you change the fillet cap to 4. That will make it a nice little outline like that. And it will make the text lo look just a bit nicer. <sighs> then we want to take both text by pressing uh, shift and take both text. And so we have this orange thing over. Then you want to press... Uh, no. Nope. Nope. Now I forgot. No. Yeah. Then you need to press C. And then you just go down all there till you find these green little things. Then you take uh, take both of the piece on the, the both the mode text. You just control both of them so you don't get like shift because that will take all of them. I mean you take the P and then you go control and take the other P. Then you press um, alt G. Alt G. Okay. And then you do that on like every layer like this. So here we have you just setting them together so you can move on them later. And then you want to change the name on the nulls right here. So you have P O T I O N. Then we want to add a null. Uh, so we're gonna take a this little box right here and just take null. Then you want to just take all of these and just drag it into the that null. Then you can delete the, this small text right here and this one as well. And there we have the text done. You can maybe change this to like text name. And there you go. Uh, so now we need to like change the alignments of this piece because if you see when you rotate right the, this right here, maybe the O, it's go like it's very really weird. So we're gonna change it right now. You wanna take all of these. You can just take the uh, highest one and P, maybe uh, like the first letter, and take the last letter with Shift. Then you have all the letters. Then you take uh, this right on the left side. You take this one. Then you just go down here and change all the positions to zero. Here you see, there's all all of them is fitting together right here. So if you want this to be more exact, you can just take each one of them, drag it like to a bit to the middle of the ladder. Like you see this box right here, box right here. You just drag it a little bit to the middle. It's not really necessary, but if you want it to be perfect, do that. Then we're gonna add a camera, which is really easy. You just go to this camera icon right here, hold it. Well, you don't really need to hold it, you can just press it. And here we have a camera. And you change down here, focal length, change that to 21. And then you just click on camera and change the position to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So all of them is zero and then you press apply. Then you see it's like really zoomed in. So you just take this thing up here and just drag it out like so. Now I have a really nice text. We can, if we go and rotate right now, we can rotate like this. I would recommend just not doing that. I'm, I'm going to take, a, I'm going to make a circle because that is a much easier. So you go here and take a circle, you just drag the camera into the circle. You should change the text to camera. Here you see if you go rotation, you can have like a very nice like that, you know. So now we need to make materials and light. So what we do is that we go and make uh, three materials. Then we take the first material and change and just turn off specular and turn luminance on 
Then we go to texture and press this little this dot right here and you take gradients. Then you press like the image here and then you go to type and change it to 2D V. Then you're just gonna add like a bit perfect like that alignment dots all over it so you get different colors. So here we can change them now. So the first is gonna be black and then it's gonna be white and then it's gonna be black. You just keep doing that and just changing up like this and it will get a nice light from it. If you misclick, just press delete, just press it and press delete, okay. So there you have it, you just go on luminous again and press this dot right here and copy channel. Go to color and press the dot again and paste, and paste channel. Then you can change the luminous mixed strength to 50. That will look very nice, maybe like a bit above, like maybe so. Well, no, 50, 50 is good. Because we're gonna do something else. We're gonna go to mode right here, change the to project, and then linear workflow, change that off, and default object color to 80%. Now we can see this looks nice. Well, I forgot something. You need to go to luminance, right? And the texture, change the turbulence to 12, and also on color, do that same. So now we're gonna make the material for the text. So we're gonna just uh, we're gonna go and take a color that looks nice. I th I'm thinking about maybe going with uh, maybe a no green won't look nice. Purple purple looks nice. I haven't I haven't done that for a while. I think like a dark purple. So yeah, then you're just gonna take to change the color to dark purple. on the side then you get this here and you find a grunge image online so I'm just gonna search up I think I have some uh, texture this is wrong downloads text nope uh, where is it I don't know where it is to be honest, maybe it's in here. Nope. So what we're gonna do now, as I didn't have it on my PC, we're gonna go to the internet. And then I'm gonna find a grunge texture. And then once you're in here, you just find a dark grunge texture. For example, this looks nice, very nice. Maybe like take this, just uh, save as, and now uh, yeah. <sighs> and then you go to just drag this picture down here and into this bar right here. You press just press no. Then you wanna change the mix strengths to like uh, twenty five. And then you put diffusion on. And go to color again and change and go copy channel and just go paste channel then you change the mix strength to like uh, 70 then you go to reflection and paste channel then you can change the color to a bit like a the same color you had and change the brightness to like 50 or maybe like 70 80 i think and make strength to like 30. Or maybe not, like a bit, bit like that, you know, 60, that looks nice. Then you can go to bump and just paste the same channel then and change maybe the strength to like 11 or something. Then you go to specular and change the mode to metal and just change the width to 70 and hit to 30. 
Doesn't need to be perfect, but just uh, sir, uh, approximately. Then you go and take Taurus Soft Shadow, which looks really nice. And you can just change a bit position so we can see how it looks. It looks good. Then you can just delete that unfinished material because we don't really need it. You can just copy this material. And then you're gonna go and change the color to like a white one. So here we have like the iron color. So here you can see you have a white color, which is an iron right now. Then we go on the text again and just open all of these right here. So we can take on the textures. So then we go and add them like that. You can change it up a bit. So like maybe so. Uh, something like that. And you just you need to have the color on each and all. Everyone. But like you can change it if it's going to be in the front and in or in the back. So now I'm going to put silver on the rest. Okay. So there we have the textures on. And as you can see right now, it doesn't look that good, right? So what we do is that we just take all of this, just change the projection to cubic and to CMOS. Also, you can see this looks pretty shit. So what we're going to do is just add a sky, which is in this floor right here, not the sky. Then we're going to put the material we added or made on. We're going to rotate it so we can see the black thing here. You just rotate it so you get this like halfway through. Then you go to Cinema 4D Tags and change the and just uh, you just right click and Cinema 4D Tags. Then you go to I think it was yeah compositing compositing and then you change and it like scene by camera and take that take that off. So as we can see now, this looks really nice. We might want to turn on the opacity for the iron a bit. Like if you see a bit like there, it doesn't get that white bright because we're gonna add CC. Maybe the color is a bit too bright, maybe like a bit less one, something like that. So now, as you can see, this looks very nice. So what we're gonna add now is the song, which I'm gonna find on the internet, of course. So I'll be right back. So, so now I've found the song, so I'm just gonna put that in right now by pressing the mo graph again and go into effector, and then take sound. Make sure you don't have nothing ticked right here, because else that this will be that will be affected. So there you go, effector, then you go sound, then you go to sign file right here, and press the three dots, and you find the sound you have. So mine was Cavalier. Be Your Girl or the Remix, which is a really nice song. So now to make, to like find a drop, we're just gonna change the frame right here to 300, which is 10 seconds. And then we're gonna just take start offset, just drag that long way back to just minus two, and that will make it go forward. So now we can find the drop. We just want to drag it like there, just see if we find a drop. Okay, so I think I found a drop. You just need to like focus a bit more. Okay. Okay, it's on 37. We're just gonna take that to like uh, there. Then we're just gonna take it like uh, how much back? Maybe 30. No, 35 would be nice. No, I mean like this. No. Uh, I think that will be good. And then you can see you you really want it to be like at two seconds, and there that will be good. So I can see it started a bit early, so I'm just gonna take it back, like five frames. It should be all fine. Okay, so we can change, we can actually check if this looks good by any angles the camera, like that. Yeah, it looks good. 
Oh, what? I think I didn't apply. Okay, so now we're gonna make the camera movements, movements first. So we're just gonna take, uh, or actually we're gonna make the text movement first because I think that is most easy. What you're gonna do is just drag it like 90 degrees, degrees, degrees forward. Just keyframe that by this button right here. You can also put an auto keyframe, but I don't like it because, yeah, I just prefer this. Then you just go to like uh, three frames before the drop, and then you just take it, take it like 100, uh, 270, like that, and then you can just go like that three more for more frames forward. It's gonna like fast like this. It goes like a bit like further like that. So now you can see it like this, very smooth. Uh, I can, you can hear like it's three drops right here. So we're gonna make like each of those just be like a text movement. So it's gonna be really fast and cool. I can hear this is another drop, 10 frames further. We're gonna go 67, three fr frames before. Just drag it a bit up so it gets like a smooth frame like this. And then we're gonna take 70. Just gonna take it a bit back so it's 180. So it goes like this. This is actually very fast, so we're gonna take f three frames before 77. Gonna like that, and then you go like uh, three frames more, and just take it more like that. So I can hear. So now we're not gonna do every single beat go cinema for the sync because that will look a bit ugly, but we're gonna take a lot of them. Okay, so now we're gonna just take it there because when you're gonna take the other way around. Now I'm gonna show you F curves later on, but now we're just gonna take Just gonna take it like that Like uh, and you're gonna track it th 360 like 270 and then you're just gonna go smooth out to 360 I'm thinking about doing like all of these as well I'm not gonna do that because it's more like drops right here. Okay, so you have the first drop is here on 77. I'm gonna go 44 as uh, 4, and then you're just gonna go like that. A bit smooth like this. Okay, and this is the first one. Do. Okay, this is 83, go like that, just... This is, uh, this is uh, 90, so we're going 3 frames before, go like this, and you just want to keep doing this. You just want to keep doing this, so... Okay, so here we're done with that sequence. It's gonna go like this. As this is going really fast, I'm think I think I'm gonna go like two frames because that will look nicer. So as you're gonna see it like this. As you can see, one you're gonna you was to go to two frames before the drop. Okay, so now 
Okay, so it's gonna look like... Okay, this, look, this looks nice. Okay, and as this is not really a sequence, you're just gonna take one. No, uh, three frames before. We're, just, we're gonna take the other way around as well, so I'm gonna show you that in F curse, as said. Like so. Yeah, I think the song ends a bit abruptly there. I'm gonna take 360 so I get a little bit more out of it. Okay, uh, 80. I'm gonna just take like this. I think. Okay, it's not so fast sequence. You're just gonna go like that. And then you're just gonna go like that. Okay, and then this is so fast we can't really do it. We're just gonna take one single like really hard uh, drop like that. So like this. And that is gonna be the last thing we're gonna do on the text movement. Now we're gonna go to camera movement and change this up a bit. We're gonna check, check what looks nice, so as you can see, I don't know, okay, that, that way looks nice, that way looks really nice actually, we're gonna take, um, like this, 90 degrees up, like so, then we're gonna just gonna take it like, just gonna take it like that, and then we're gonna just go around 270 again, no. 180, I think. And then we're gonna have 90 there, so it looks very nice. Not really 90, because we have to do really fast movement. Okay, so we're just gonna take the same way for now. We're gonna change that up. We're just gonna take the same create frames as we did last time. If you want this to be a bit easier, you can just uh, go and take all of these and just take on the drops right there. Just gonna take them. No, nope. well, you have to like line this up right here. So. There, so something like that. And then you're gonna keep doing the camera, I guess. Okay, so now. Something like that. Yep, uh, like this. Okay, just two frames before. Remember that, because that is what we had last time. Okay, mm. something like this will look very nice. So look at this. Ok, 
Okay, and you just take it like that and go this straight all the way. It's really just keyframing. So like this, make up the movements. Mm. I think this might be a bit fast for the camera moves. I'm gonna, just gonna take the back keyframe to be a bit ba more back. Like that, so it makes it a bit smoother, I guess. That will be changed with the sync in After Effects, so yeah. As you can see, this looks really nice, but we need some zoom because this will look really boring. What we're gonna do is just go into the camera right here, and then you're gonna go and just take it a bit back at the start or at front as you want. I like to take it. Well, I like to take it in a bit back, so you're just gonna take it like that, bit forward, and then you're just gonna. I think I'm gonna do like a really front like this. I'm just gonna So what we have here is like a really nice zoom so you can see like this As you can see this looks really nice Now we, I don't think we're gonna do the same, to be honest. We're just gonna take the camera and just keyframe once without changing anything. I think we're just gonna take it all the way back here. This keyframe right here. I don't know what. I don't think that looked good. Maybe like this, maybe that, that will look good. No, I think we're just gonna take like H and I think actually we're gonna keyframe all of them, like so. Just go a bit down. You just wanna do this on everything, to be honest. Like this. Then you want to give it forward, I guess. And for for the start, fast sequences, you can just take it like back once, and it will look good. Maybe before the ending, you can just take it forward. Then you can take it like forward like that, maybe. And then you can just go, go down. And then you go down. So that will look nice. There we have the camera done, actually. So now we might want some little diversity on the text, so now we're gonna just gonna add a fracture in the MoGraph right here. 
Just put that in and put the, all this text right here inside the fracture. And so what you want to do then is just go to MoGraph again and hold the fracture over and take the random. So now we can see it's a bit like weird. So we're going to go to parameter, take a position, just take that off and rotation, just change that to like 180 on one. Then you take minus 180 on the next one and 180 on the next one as well. So yeah, here you can see a very nice uh, little camera text movement right here. You can change the seat down here. So yeah, as well. So that looks nice. So now we're going to change the string strength to look nice. As you can see in the start, we don't really want anything. Maybe here on the sequence, we want something. You're going to take here from that. You need to hold control and press this. And then you can go there. Take this up to maybe like 30% uh, and just go down to like really far above. Take this down. Take this like really far away up. Okay, there. Just take it all the way down right there. So now it looks like this. To be honest, that looks pretty ugly, so I'm gonna change the seat again. Maybe like that. That looks ugly. I think the parameter is wrong. We just need to like uh, go a little bit crazy. Maybe we can just not take that much, to be honest. So, maybe like, uh, I'm thinking wrong direction now. Maybe like 50 would be okay, I think. Maybe not so far. Like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing by just con pressing control and press this little dot right here. And just change this maybe like there. Then we can change it back here. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a really cool spline, maybe like here. So we're gonna add circles, just three circles, normal. Then we can take all of them, just change the radius so it's outside the text like this. You can see it's circle right here. Then we're gonna go on each and every circle, like this one. You can change it like there. You can go this one and go like there. That looks nice. Now we have all the circles done. We're gonna go into this box right here and add sweep nerves. Then we're just gonna copy that and add three of them. Then we're then we're gonna add three more circles. Um, and so, that is just to make this actually be visible. So now we're gonna take this circle and add it in, and in that sweep nerve, and the next one, in that, and so on. Then we're gonna do the same with the other circles. So as you can see, these are really big right now, but we, I know how to fix that. So we go on the top circles, right? Go on control, and you click on all of them. On the all of the top circles. Then you go and change the radius to like 5. Or actually you can change to like 3. Because that looks nice. Then we're gonna add a um, twist. Twist just add to all of those sweep nerves under all of them. I think it was something like that. And then what we have here is twist. We can just change around like that, you know. I think we're just gonna take minus like a bit like there and just change the radius to like a bit more like so so it gets a bit smoother I don't know how smooth it's gonna be but this looks nice and now now we can what we can do is that we can take the sweep nerves right here just keyframe those we're gonna go here Take the end growth, just change that to zero, and then we're gonna press control and keyframe both of those dots. Then we're gonna go to like uh, here, just gonna go to the end growth and take that to 100 and keyframe it. Then, like a bit further in, just take the start growth, 100, keyframe it. Now we have a really nice spline like this. As you can see, that looks really nice. Now we need to add some uh, like 
color on it or texture so we're gonna add this material right here on every other one so it gets a bit different like that that will look nice now as you can see this intro will look super good okay oh my god very nice so now what when we're done with this you can actually just start rendering this by pressing this button right here just press it and i'll see you when in the after effects so now i'm back and now i'm gonna start on the after effects so what you need to do first is go to this left side here and press and uh, hold over import and file like that and here we can uh, locate the file the folder you saved it in I think this is where I saved it. Two, 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 two. Okay. So what you need to do is press the A E C, and how to fix this, as you may already see if you have already opened it, is that it it will come a message here that you can't open it, but there will be a link in the description on how to fix that. So yeah. So first off, we're gonna stop making the smoke. We need to make uh, three black layers uh, solids by just right clicking down here and go to new and solid and uh, choose the color black. Then you need to put this under the text and just press control C, control V and so we have three of those. Then you want to search up form which is a paid plugin. It's uh, from trap code. And then what you want to do next is that you go to base form. No, you don't. You don't. You don't want to go to base form. You want to go to disperse and twist and set the disperse to six thousand. Then you go to particle and uh, put the particle type to cloudlet, and then the size to two hundred and fifty. As you can see now, we have a smoke right here. But this is really white, it's not really smoke, so we have to turn on the opacity. Usually like 2 is good. Because, uh, we don't want it so bright. Maybe not 2, because that is a bit too bright. 1 is okay for now. As you can see, this doesn't look that good. So what we're gonna add is a CC vector blur. Which in the effect tab right here. You just drag it down here. Uh, or double tap it I guess. And as you can see, it doesn't do much now, but once we hit the type and directing direction fading, and change the amount to 80, we'll see this has a lot of difference, and this will make the smoke look cool. And also, as you can see, there are black bars down here, uh, and you really want to fix that, so what you need to do is that just go in all of the black solids, and press S, and then take the scale to 125. Then you can press S and go back again. Then we're gonna do the particles, which is really easy. You just you just take the particles on the top black solid and search up particular, which is also a paid plugin. Then you go to emitter and take uh, maybe 75 particles per second and then box. And then you got this emitter down here, and you change all of those to 5000. So as you can see, the particles are very small, so we're going to change that by opening the particle. And changing the size to maybe like 75. Or actually, we're going to change it all the way to 150. We will have very big particles now, but I think that looks cool. So now we're gonna add opacity random, and then uh, size random, and put that up again as well. As you can see, this looks very nice. But if if you move this right, this this particle won't move, right? So how to fix that? You just go onto physics down here and change the gravity to 150. 
And also, if you want to change the color to the color of the text, you go to color and then change it to purple. As you can see, this might be a bit big, so I think I'm gonna set it down to like 100. And also, if you want a bit rounder spear, you can change the spear feather to 100. Now, as you can see, this looks very smooth. So now, we're gonna start on the CC. What you do is that you right-click down here, and New, and Adjustment Layer. Then, you go search up Looks, which is also a paid plugin. A lot of these plugins are paid. So then you go to magic polo looks and press edit up here. So now we have this uh, little section right here. So all, 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 you can also go here and find some presets. Which might look nice, but we're not going to do that because I'm going to show you how to make CC. What you do is that you go to subject first, and then you go all the way right to tools, and what did I do? And then you go to tools, right? And then you take on pop. Then you just take the pop all the way to 100. Now you can go back to tools and put on LUT. Then take it to a one of the EOS standard cool or warm if your color is cool that's gonna be cool if it's warm like orange it's gonna be warm but I'm gonna take cool because it's it is a purple which is a cool col color then we're gonna go to matte right here so as you can see here there are a lot of diffusions which is glow so what you want to do is go to diffusion put that on and take it to just add three of those then you can go on the second one right here no no the first one you can change to size 100 and the color you like right down here then you can go to diffusion then the second one and change the size to 30 which is already set and then take the glow to 100 and the grade to 2 then you go to the next diffusion and take f size 5 and grade 2, no 1, and then glow 100 and to the color you want. So as you can see down here you can have this tool train which you can see how it looks without. So this is how it is without and this is put on. So it's not done yet, we need a lot more. So what you need to do is add a light flex. And just change it to the color we want and then you want to add a gradient so here you go on y1 and change it to 100 and then y2 change it to minus 50 and as you can see we don't want this brownish color you just go down here you see this black white thing right there with a the black stripe just drag that down all the way down to black and then you can change the strain strength to 50 so now we want to go to tools again and go to lens. So now we're gonna add a vignette and then just take it all a bit farther. This orange thing right there, a bit further. Then you want to get an edge softness and just take the spread over on the right side here to one and the blur size to two. You call it no, the blur size to one and quality to 10 maybe you don't actually want that you can maybe put the spread a little bit less like this because that will look a bit better now we're gonna go to lens to tools again and add a um, lens distortion just take the flatten just take that to zero distortion take that to minus 25 then we want to add a chromatic aberration change it the red to cayenne or whatever color you have as you can see I um, I have something like mag magenta 
you want to change that to the color so I just go one As you can see we'll make it a nice little outline right here if I put it a bit further yes so as you can see right there you just want it at zero one because that will look the best and then you want to um, go to camera and add a three strip process and as you can see this will look really bad but once you turn down the strength to minus three it will look super nice like mm, there then you want to go back to tools again and add a color reversal and just cha change th the strength to 25 then we can also add a warm cool to make it a bit more the color we want so maybe a bit cool and a little bit more to the orange like the purple side that looks nice then we want to go to tools again and add a and then go to post and add a S curve then we want to change the contrast to 1 then go to tools again and the curves and change the mid tones to 0.333 and shadows to po minus 0.444 and as you can see the smoke is a bit bright so we're going to change that by going to the smoke and change the um, opacity to 0 0.5 And as you can see, if you have it so low on this, the vector below will change. So we can have it at one actually, and then change the si the opacity on the layer by just going here and press T. Then you can just drag it down to whatever you like. So I really like not to write something like here. So now you can just barely see the smoke, which looks really nice. I think we actually forgot some on the magic pool looks we forgot a um, yes we forgot an anamorphic flare on the lens we're just gonna add that take the threshold down to zero the size down to 100 and the boost down to minus 3 or minus uh, minus 3 to minus 6 I guess or minus 5 minus 4 I think is good and then the color you not like. So as you can see, this looks nice, but it's the outside of the text looks a bit bland. So we're just gonna take this text right there and copy one of them. Then we're gonna go to effects and presets and search up shine, which which is also a purchased template in the trap code. And then you're gonna take it on the layer below like that on the below layer and then you're gonna change the ray length to 3 and the colorize is gonna be a purple so as you can see this looks really nice but a bit like too many straight lines so what we're gonna do is go to turbulence displays and, and just put that on there So now we can start on the sync. First, we need to just put in uh, put put in the song. So we're gonna find the song now. We're gonna go and find this. Actually, I have it in recent files. So Cavalier, be your girl, or the remix. Just put that in. I guess you can't put it in there. On the newer versions, you can just drag it in there, but not on this older version I have. Just drag it in to there, and as you can see, you have it here. And also I would recommend you saving it like now so you you don't miss anything so now we have the song in you just drag it down to wherever you like it doesn't really matter I like it like uh, I like it below the text uh, and then you go and press L twice and then you just drag this little thing right here just drag it like so and if you want to hear like the drops you just go like 
you press con you hold control and just drag it forward. So as you can see, this is not to drop. I think this might be the drop. Okay, so as you can see, this is our marker. We're gonna take it all the way to there. And as you can see, here's the drop. I think you're... And also to make it more smooth, which is... You will need to put the song a bit f further than the actual sync. So now it's gonna look like this. So make so to make this look so to make this render faster in preview, you just take you just take this eye side thing right here and turn the adjustment layer with the CC off and the and the little uh, and the smoke off as well. That, uh, so as you can see now, this will look really nice. So now we can actually see if the Cinema 4 is sync is right. Which we, since the Cinema f the Cinema 4 sound can lag a bit in Cinema 4D, but I think uh, we have it right. So so let's just check on it now. So as you can hear, that was right. Now we're gonna start making a sync. We're actually gonna make bounce sync, which will look really nice. So what you do is that you just search up transform um, and s underscore shake, which is a paid plugin. And then you just add two of those, two of uh, s underscore shake. Then you also add a Twitch, which is also a paid plugin. There are are a lot of paid plugins which will come. I don't know how much you could possibly get it for free, really easy. So yeah, what you do is that you just take the scale right there on the first. You just keyframe it by that. You just leave it at that for now, and then you go to shake. And put to take the amplitude to zero and keyframe and then take put motion blur on and frequency to six. Then you can also put the Y shake, you no know, the set the Z shake to hundred and frequency to two. Then you want to go to uh, shake two and uh, just Put motion blur on and change the amplitude to zero. And then keyframe it. Then you go to Twitch and take the amount to zero and speed to 200. And then keyframe the amount and then go to enable. And take the slide and scale. Tick it out. Tick that all on. So now we want to go to the next frame, which we can do really easily by just going up here. Just as you can see, first frame, previous frame, play, next frame. So we're just gonna click that. And now we're gonna do the effects, right? So we're gonna take the scale and put it to 160. And if you are a intro maker already, you might uh, think that this is a lot, but Actually, on bounce sync, this isn't a lot. On shake, on the first shake, you want to take two, and on the second one, you want to take one. And then on amount on Twitch, you want to take that to 20. Then you just take the adjustment layer and press U. And actually, also, what we need to do is put the look else looks layer above it because we don't want the looks to be synced with this so 
Now, as you can see right here, this looks very nice. Actually, it doesn't look that nice right now, but it will look nice. So now we take all of these keyframes, just drag uh, this little white thing over, and then uh, control copy, and then paste it in. Then to make bouncing, you need to take off the first keyframes. I'm just gonna delete that now. And and then also what you need to do is just drag this over again and control copy. Now what you can do is that you already have this copied, right? So you can just go here, just control V, and then you go to the next, and then you just go to the next bit, as you can hear with Q, you can hear it with Q. Actually the drop was about here. And the next one drop us here. So as you can hear now, this will look very nice. Now we have something like this. So I, uh, if you can hear it, right? You can hear like the little beats. So you just hear from them that. So that is what I'm doing. It might be hard for beginners to do this as a as uh, with like fast things. So Also, on the snares, you sometimes want to do this. So, as right now, I'm gonna do this. As you can hear now, this will look very nice. Actually, it won't look that nice because it's too much shake right now. So, what we're gonna do is take the last two, the first two keyframes on Shake 2 and Twitch. You're just gonna copy that. Then you want to go to like middle of these two right here, and then check like a, a bit shorter, like really short actually, because we don't want it to be too much. So you just keep doing that over, which will take like zero seconds to do. We still want some shake, so that's why we have this sh shake number one on. So now, what we can do now... Now what you can do is actually make the bouncing, but... So what we do is that we just drag this all over the keyframes. And you can either press F9, which is the simplest one. But I'm not gonna do that, because that is gonna stop my recording. So I'm just gonna go and right click and go to keyframe assistant. Go easy ease. So now, once you... Now we can just click that. Right, and, once, and now we can click this little graph um, icon here, which is graph editor right here. And as you can see, we get this thing up. So, first you have to check that you have edit value graph on. So we can edit the value, not the speed. Now, for, so now what we're going to do is just drag it down like that by pressing the middle. And then just dragging. 
and if it's some really small small parts you might want to uh, zoom in a bit by just dragging this thing right here but I don't really need that just now you can be just go well, really precisely like this and that's really the formula to bounce sync which will look very nice on the intro and also what we want to do is at the end just add like this uh, just add like this something like that and as you can see now it just goes slowly down you also want to add these two right here to just make this a bit shorter and take the scale down to 100 so now this will look very nice but but this um, the shake uh, the, the sink right the bounce sink will look a bit too smooth right so what we're gonna change is that we're just gonna click on this little first button up here just drag this all the way to the right side so then it will it will look the best So now we're just gonna look at this by pre-rendering. So now it's uh, nearly done pre-rendering, and we'll look at it just now. And if you realize you missed a beat, just uh, just go over it and and keyframe that. So I realized I missed a bit there, and I'm just gonna keep from it like that. So as you can see on this this uh, bouncing, we will need to change something like this. Just drag it down again. Now it will look like uh, it will look good. So now we can look at the intro. So now I'm gonna show you some effects to make your intro look cool. So now we're just gonna add another adjustment layer to add on the first effect. We don't really need to do this on all of the effects, just this one, which we're gonna searching S underscore wave warp waves waves, which is also a paid plugin, which is in the Sapphire plugin. Then you need to just change the A amplitude, just turn that off. And then the B waves, just um, take the amplitude there to minus 0.3. And then the frequency to 0 0.2. And now we can keyframe this. So the first, we're just gonna take 0 on amplitude. And then on this, just keyframe that as set this, just keyframe that as well. So at the start right here, we're gonna add minus 0.3 on amplitude and 0 0.8 on set dist. So now, once we go all the way, so now we just go to the like, not not the next keyframe, just just wherever you actually want it. I want it a bit far out like this, and take it to zero and then one. So as you can see now, this will look, make it look like really nice effect.
We can add this uh, many more times actually. So now I'm gonna add it, add it more times. Now I'm gonna add it right here. So if you have like a sequence you want to have it on all the time, you just go on that sequence and just add it all the way to the end of that sequence, like here. So now I want it like here, this will look very nice. So now we're gonna add a effect called Turbulence Displaced, which well, kind of looks looks the same, but not actually. So what you do is that you take the amount and take that to zero, where you're gonna key from it, like here. Then you take the offset to zero on both 9, 4, 16, 5, 40. And then you can keyframe the amount. Then go to the next frame. And then key, go to amount and just keyframe it to and take the amount of 100. And then start keyframing the size and then also the evolution. Now we can go a bit further into the intro. So I'm going to do it like here. Take the amount all the way down to 0 and the size up to 250. And then the evolution to 360. So this effect won't, I don't think it looks good only one time, so I'm going to do it a lot of times. I think we're actually going to do one right here as well, so now it will look like that. You just want to add it wherever you want. I think I'm gonna add one here as well. And also one here. Mm. Okay, so I'm, you need to save it sometimes, as I didn't. Now I'm gonna add a effect called TV damage. What you do is that you you go and make a new adjustment layer, and then you drag it under the CC. Remember that, and then you go and take uh, and add a S underscore TV damage, and then just put it on there. And now this will look really bad. So what you do is that you go to effect and take the TV damage color to TV damage mono. And then you can say you can you I will do something down here. So inference amp you go to zero ghost amp zero horizontal hold zero vertical hold zero and uh, that's really it. And then you go to static density down here. Take that to one and then TV pixels to 1500 now you can add you can make like a little something like this just not that far like maybe like this so now you can make it uh, you can keep from it by taking out opacity and taking out 100 at the start then 0 at the end So as you know, I want it here, and then I can just copy the whole layer and add another one. And right there. So I also want one here. You don't really want to overdo this.
And so now we want to add a uh, uh, hue HLS or a hue saturation. So what you do is that you need to take this over the magic ball looks and you just, uh, you just search in HLS. Then you can see color balance, you just put that on and now we can change on the hue which will make the color change. So I want a color change right uh, here by just keyframing the hue and then go like to where you want it to end. Just take that to however far you want. So here you just pressing on these will take uh, 360 like all the way. I want one here as well. Just go for key from that. And also, what we need to add now, what what is really cool is a glow, which is S underscore glow. Or you can use exposure, doesn't really matter. I think glow looks best though. So now we're gonna add this on all of these uh, keyframes right here. We're just gonna add uh, a brightness to, to I think because we want it a bit bright. Because we don't, we're not gonna have it like all like so far. We're just gonna have it basically like. Uh, this and maybe we're gonna have it a bit further on the other like maybe the big ones right here so now we're just gonna take these and just add it then you just add those all over Like so. Doesn't really matter if you joke around with the marker. We don't really need those anymore. Um, and then you just go like this. And now here. So as you can see now. As you can see, there's a nice glow right now. So now we're actually nearly done with the intro. Uh, so now we're gonna add a shock wave. So what I usually use is I just use pre-made shock waves. In, you can find a lot of free pre-made shock waves. So this is Cam Arts shock wave. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for his one. And uh, uh, it costs money. So yeah, you need to buy it. So I recommend this is real. This is really nice. So yeah, or you can just find something free. It's plenty out there. Do whatever you want. I don't care about it. Just as it's a good one. Okay. So now you just take this and just add it under the text layer. Remember that. Then you take this and add it to right where the drop is. Just drag it right there. So now we're actually kind of done with that, not really, we need a lot more done doing with this. So what you do is that you go right here, you see these four little bars right here? You take the last one, right, this, so you get this box up, right? So now this is a long way to the right side. Now we're gonna press P, and you see this? Just change the position to zero. Now we also need to change the size a bit by pressing S. And uh, pressing and taking it to 125 maybe. So now, if you take the smoke on, you can't actually see it behind. And that is a really simple reason because this is a normal. And uh, now we we just need to add take it on screen because then we can see the background. As you can see, background right here. So now we're gonna change the color because we don't want red. Um, like uh, a red shockwave but if you have the color red on your intro you really want this 
Now you're gonna go to HLS and just put that on and drag it and drag this to the color to whatever you want. So I'm gonna have purple, like uh, this is a purple I think. This is the purple I have and So now I think we're actually kind of done with the intro. We need just some more little uh, just fixes. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna we're gonna take and make a like uh, um, fade on the song. We're just gonna take it all the way down. If you have new new programs, you can it, you only need to take it like forty, like thirty. I think I don't know. Now we take it like maybe a bit, like only like one second. You don't want it too far. You go to like one second before it ends and take that. And just take it all the way down as well. So now we also need a fade, uh, some black bars actually, and some fade on the intro. So now we just add an another adjustment layer. And just put a motion tile on, which is not a paid plugin. I will say every time there's a paid plugin, I will say it's a paid plugin. Now we just go to out output height and take that to 75 on the motion tile. Then you go to new again and add a solid and change the opacity to on the start and the end to 100. Then you go like a bit further in, like maybe a li little over one second and just take it all the way down. Then just take uh, a little bit over one second before, just take it all the way down as well. So now we have it like this, it will do fed, fade. Also one thing I almost forgot is a uh, RSMB or a motion blur, which will look very nice on the intro. So you need to have this like... Uh, literally right over this shake which will look very nice then you go and search up rsmb which is a paid plugin by revison then you just go add this on right here then you change the blur amount to one and the motion sensitivity to 99 so now if we turn all of these on we will see that the intro will look very beautiful so if we just have it on like that, now we can go all the way like maybe here. Maybe like here, I guess. Something like here so we can have all the things and see if it actually looks nice or we do or we have to do some rework on the CC. This might take a while to load. Yes. Um I think we might have to look a bit more into the CC. I think we don't have it's n it's not that contrasted yet. And I also think that the pop needs bit we need need a bit more pop. But just adding another pop, you could just take it maybe to like fifty, and there we go. Very nice. Then you go to post I guess and take on no camera and go to the tree street process which you have down here take it all the way down take it down to minus four that might look good I think that will look much better and also as you can see the smoke is a bit too bright I I don't think you can see it because YouTube kind of downgrades it, I get, I think, but it's a bit too bright, in my opinion. Just turn it like, like down like five percent. And now I think we're actually done with the intro. So now I'm gonna pre-render it, and I see you when I'm done pre-rendering in like one millisecond in your future. So yeah. Okay, so now the intro is done. So. Now we will go and check out how it looks. As you can see, that looks beautiful. 
So now once we're done, we're gonna render it. So what you do is that you press composition up here and go add to render queue. Then you go to output to and then you find where you want to save it. I already have a preset folder, so yeah. Then you go to output mode and change uh, and just if you have a new ver new version, the audio output would already be on. But it's not on me, so I'll, yeah. So once you're done with that, you can just start rendering. Basically, just put press that. You're gonna start rendering. So I really did do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have some questions, just uh, go ask them over on Twitter because that is where I'm gonna be answering. Link in the description. So see you. Bye.